right, good evening. Thanks for being in church tonight. Song number 175. Song number 175. And let's stand as we sing tonight. 175, Dwelling in Beulah Land, 175. Appreciate you coming back for the Sunday night church. 175. Far away the noise of strife upon my ear is falling. Dwelling in Beulah Land. Hey, we're going to be there soon. Amen. Let's sing about it on 175. Ready? Far away the noise of strife upon my ear is falling. Then I know the sins of earth be set on every hand. Down Amen. Thank you for being here tonight. Let's open with a word of prayer as we begin the service. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to be in church tonight. Uh, thank you for us, uh, for your word, and thank you for the privilege it is to uh, be gathered together. Lord, I pray that you bless us now as we sing, uh, Lord, as we pray in just a moment for some prayer requests, as we hear some blessings and answers to prayer. We're thankful for that. And Lord, as we uh, go to the message once again tonight. Would you speak to us? We're thankful for these things and the fellowship afterwards. Although we're thankful for that. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. 389. 389 in your songbook there. Uh, 389. 389. Tell it to Jesus. Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? We'll sing the first... Uh, second and last of Tell It to Jesus, 389 in your song. Sing it on verse number one. Ready? Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Are you grieving? Overjoys departed. Tell it to Jesus. 
I failed to mention that this morning that we were going to have a fellowship tonight uh, for the November birthdays and anniversaries. And so we will do that following uh, the evening service uh, tonight. Let's grab our prayer sheets here and a blessing and receive from uh, Miss Betty this afternoon. Uh, she has a they have a nine o'clock appointment with the urologist tomorrow. And uh, and that was that's a miracle because from what she had said earlier that that doctor was all booked up for a long time, but she got an automated, uh, I guess, automated call today, and uh, and so she said thank you for praying. She's been li they've been listening in, and, uh, and 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 listening into each service, and so uh, they're thankful for the prayers. But just pray for uh, he's in good spirits. Every he's doing fine. And uh, everything is progressing, and, and so just continue to be praying. Maybe, maybe you give the doctor wisdom to be able to find out uh, or be able to give some guidance and help uh, in regards to Brother Mel's uh, condition. And so just continue to be praying for uh, him, if you would, please. Uh, but we're thankful for that. Um, Miss Cassie, is there any more news that you maybe heard from your brother-in-law? Nothing at all. So we'll keep praying for Lamar there. Uh, in his uh, surgery uh, or recovery there. And, uh, and then, of course, uh, mention uh, nothing new from Miss Joy, your neighbors, in regards to Nick, nothing there. So continue to pray. And uh, nothing on our end in, re in hearing anything about Linda. I stopped by and saw Miss Virginia this afternoon. She's just a little bit dizzy today. Uh, she hopes to maybe even be in the ladies' Bible study tomorrow. Uh, but uh, we'll just uh, she'll she'll call or, or touch base with her or picks her up for that. But but uh, good to see her today and to continue to pray for her. And then Bob has that surgery this Thursday, uh, 3 p.m. Is that right? 3 p.m. Outpatient there, and uh, and so just be praying that uh, uh, that goes well. And uh, there might be a chance, uh, well, whatever they say. But I know you were talking beforehand about there might not be anything there to do. But but we'll uh, find out. And uh, certainly praying about that this coming Thursday. Could be gone. We don't know. He doesn't have any source there. But, but uh, certainly be praying for uh, Bob for this uh, coming uh, Thursday. All right. Um, continue to be praying for our country and uh, leadership. And um, uh, is, is it, did I see this correctly, that in regards to Israel, is Netanyahu back in power there? Uh, yeah. that's, that's what I thought. And so... Uh, let's be praying for our, for Israel, and um, and 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 make and, and and make sure. And as we pray, we ask the Lord that our relationship with Israel is uh, what it should be. And um, and no man is perfect, but I, I I'm pretty sure that Netanyahu is a good leader uh, for Israel. And uh, and so, uh, just uh, like I said, no 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 man and no leader is perfect. All right, so. Uh, we're not lifting him up, but we're lifting up God and uh, asking God that our relationship is biblical with Israel and, uh, and so that the Lord blesses our country because 
of what our relationship is with Israel. So that's the reasoning for that. Uh, prayer request. Uh, anybody else have a prayer request, uh, maybe, or an update? Just look at it here. Uh, some folks traveling, be praying for them. Uh, getting back to school. The kids want to start school at 6.30 tomorrow morning. And so uh, that's what they were saying. That was the what I heard, right? No? Uh, what if there was free coffee at 6.30? No? That wouldn't work either? You'd be there for that? All right. <laughs> Uh, I'll just drop off the free coffee and then I'll come back at 8.15. Right? But uh, anyway, uh, be praying as we get back into school. And uh, as we mentioned last night in the prayer call, um, just a couple weeks and they'll be taking their semester uh, uh, exams right before Christmas break. And, uh, and so just be praying as they uh, retain what they have learned, all right, or cram, whatever one is uh, applicable applicable right is that the word anyway who else has a prayer request tonight you want to add to the list this evening all right yes um bethany and nick are traveling back um and nick is not feeling well so just be praying for them because he's in a field right now all right be praying for nick and becky they're uh Semental. they're heading back uh uh, to the San Francisco Bay Area, so be praying for them, and Brother Nick is under the weather, so uh, they're going to try to make it today, but he was uh, sick this morning and sick tonight, so just be praying for him, all right? Anybody else uh, with a prayer request? Yes? Put a circle around the businesses there, and um, and certainly um, praying that the Lord would give wisdom and and provide. Amen. Sure will. Okay. Uh, anybody else, Brother Mike? You don't have a microphone, do you? Um, can we get one for Brother Mike uh, Justice? I know I have one up here just in case this other one doesn't go. But we'll get that uh, here in just a moment. Uh, does anybody else have a? Uh, uh, a blessing you'd like to share? We had a good time this, uh, on Thursday uh, with several of the folks uh, in the Thanksgiving meal, and I'm thankful for the opportunity to spend time with with church folk, and so thank you for those that came, and, and we had a good time, and we're thankful for that. Um, when, when we were at the table, I got a text from uh, Miss Betty and they had taken uh, Mel to the ER that morning, Thanksgiving morning, and again having a blockage and uh, not able to utilize the catheter. And, uh, and so she sent a text like right there to pray. And so we just stopped what we were doing and we took time and Brother Reimer and myself, we prayed for this. And, and uh, talking to Miss Betty later, she said that uh, right around that time, everything started to be back to normal. If you would and so uh, listen prayer works and, um, and and we're thankful for it and so uh, we're thankful for that opportunity uh, to be a small part of that yes ma'am did you have one go ahead I praise the Lord that Rick was able to easily replace the rabies in the middle yes that's right amen First time. yes yes did you have any assistance like you know looking up looking up to see how were you just I look, watch the YouTube video. there you go Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's so much stuff that they have to look at that. But uh, praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, keep, that, keep that truck running. Amen. 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 Anybody else with a blessing you'd like to share? All right. Anybody? Okay. Yes, sir. Yep. Amen. We're praying for Chad, um, the Rhymer's son-in-law, and uh, for his health. He also has a presentation, I think, tomorrow, right? 
tomorrow with supervisors. And so we, if we want to continue to be praying for him, that would be great uh, as well. All right. So praise the Lord for that. Okay, Brother Mike, if you just take a moment and just pray for some of these requests again this evening and uh, also for unspoken. I didn't get that this morning. We have several unspoken. If you have one tonight, just lift up your hand. We'll get that added to tonight. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14. All right, so 14 unspoken requests. And uh, let's go to prayer for these uh, requests tonight and ask the Lord to... Uh, meet with us in the service this evening. All right, Brother Mike, if you would. Thank you, sir. Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you again for answer to prayer and the, the, the answers that we hear tonight and the testimonies, Lord. Uh, we thank you for that. We thank you for everything you provide and your healing hand upon our lives. And Lord, it seems like we need it more and more each and every day, and we do. And Lord, we thank you that you provided a way that we could call upon your name and ask you for those things that we need. Lord, where would we be without you? And we're so thankful that we can be together and encourage each other. And this evening, Lord, our hearts are heavy. We think of those who are, are struggling with, with uh, small illness or life illness. You know, whether it's cancer with leukemia, we think of, of Nick. Um, we think of others like Jan and Linda Van Lishout. We think of Allison and, and Robert Fisher and um, Albert Beck. We think of Bob and his upcoming surgery, Lord. We pray that you just, you just uh, guide the surgeon and, and make everything just 100% success. And those that have venues and avenues to... Um, have that surgery for cancer, we pray that you would help them and give them the doctor's success and 100% removals. Lord, we pray for healing for those who are um, fighting illnesses and flus. Um, we think of those who are upcoming surgery. We think of Lamar and those who are recovering from, from surgery. Lord, we pray that you would give them strength and healing. Um, we also thank you for the the good report from Mel and Betty, and we continue to ask you to help Mel and, and Betty as they um, struggle against health issues. And we pray that you would give the doctor wisdom to um, not only uh, recognize the problem, isolate it, and treat it f with success. We pray that you give them healing and comfort, your will. Lord, others uh, that are traveling, we think of the Simmentals and and Wesley, and other family members that are perhaps traveling. We pray that you would help them. There's many needs, Lord. We all have so many of them. We think of the unspokens. We pray that you would uh, have your will and your way in each and every one of them. We thank you for the good report of the Hofmeisters in Ecuador. What a blessing and honor that is. Lord, please continue to strengthen and grow that ministry. And help us here in Yuma. Help strengthen us and grow this ministry here. We're thankful for our pastor and his family and everything you provide here at Liberty Baptist Church. Help us to obey your word, live the joyful life that you have for us, that others might see Christ and call upon your name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight, uh, 258. 258. And uh, we'll remain seated as we sing this song. Guys, we'll come at the last verse. We'll sing the first and last verse of Hiding in Thee. Remain seated tonight as we sing 258. Guys, we'll come at the end uh, for our offering. 258, Hiding in Thee. Sing it on verse number one. Ready? Oh, save to the rock that is on.
time for our offering tonight. And uh, let's go, Lord, in prayer for our offering as we give to the Lord this evening. Thank you, Father, for once again meeting our needs. Thank you for providing for us, Lord. Thank you uh, that you give us a place where we can hide in Thee and we can spend time, Lord, with You every moment of every day. You're never closed. You're never, never, uh, Lord, you're always there, always ready to listen to us, to hear um, from us and to talk to us. And we're thankful for that. I pray that you bless the offering tonight in a special way. Meet the needs of our church. Meet the needs of our missionaries. Uh, Lord, meet the needs of the Bible Literature Missionary Foundation. We're thankful for these opportunities. And uh, Lord, even meet the needs of uh, Brother Hoffmeister, Lord, as uh, Lord, you've laid it upon our hearts to be able to do a little something to help them, uh, Lord, in uh, their uh, property uh, looking and possibly buying here. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would bless them. And uh, bless this offering in a special way for your honor and glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter number 3, 1 Samuel chapter number 30. Ecclesiastes chapter number 3, 1 Samuel chapter number 30. First Samuel and chapter number 30, and then pick up Ecclesiastes chapter number 3. Ecclesiastes chapter number 3, we'll look at that first in your Bible. And then we'll look at 1 Samuel and chapter number 30. Ecclesiastes chapter number 3, we'll read the first eight verses. Ecclesiastes chapter number 3, and then we'll look at 1 Samuel in chapter number 30. Ecclesiastes chapter number 3, verse number 1. Are you there? Amen. If you're not, just look intelligently at the page that you're at. Amen. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter number 3, because everywhere you look, it's all good. Amen. Oh, man. Praise the Lord. There's never a wrong page when you could open your Bible and look at and say, well, you know what? That's not for me. Because everything is, isn't it? Everything's for me. To everything, there is a season. I want you to understand that. that notice what the Bible says there. To everything, there is a season. Life is full of seasons. Amen? Life is full of seasons. And uh, as we see here uh, in verse uh, number 2, uh, we see that uh, there is going to be a list of these seasons. But understand that every thing in life, churches go through seasons. Individuals go through seasons. And, and, and it would help you understand, it would help us to understand the Christian life to understand that, hey, everything's not all mountaintop. Does that make sense? Sometimes, now we can have a good spirit in a valley. I'm not talking about that. That's not, but, but, but there's times of mountaintops, but there's also times of valleys. To everything there is a season, notice, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep 
and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, a time of time of peace. Now, don't, don't lose that uh, uh, portion of Scripture. Go over to 1 Samuel chapter number 30. 1 Samuel chapter number 30, look at verse number 1. 1 Samuel chapter number 30, verse number 1. It came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites, hey, those are the same ones we talked about in Sunday school. Uh, they were never wiped away. Notice what the Bible says, had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and it burned and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein, verse 2, 1 Samuel 30, verse 2, they slew not any, neither great nor or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. I would, I would venture to say this. As they were coming back, they knew it was already des destroyed. You understand that? A whole city burning, I think you'd see it from afar. So the question of, boy, is that Ziklag? Boy, is that Ziklag? And then they were, it was confirmed. And so think about that, again, in their thinking and in their, in their minds. It was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Have you been there before? No matter the situation, just the, pack, the fact that they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken cap, captives, and I am... Uh, Jezreelitis and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite, Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David cur encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Tonight, just the simple message, I want us to uh, encourage us in regarding uh, discouragement. Not to let discouragement be a season that we live in. Or, don't stay in Ziklag. That's the title of the message tonight. Don't stay in Ziklag. Father, bless us now in the few moments that we have. Speak to us through your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. A lot of us get discouraged, every one of us. And if you're here and, you've never, and you say you never, never have ever been discouraged, um, wow, you're a greater Christian than I am or anybody else that's in here. We've been discouraged before. And it's a season. As you go back to Ecclesiastes chapter number 3, it's a season. A, a time to be born is an encouraging time. Uh, a time where, uh, of course, there for, for my uh, children, of course, my wife was there too. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> But for those, those days of which our children were born, hey, that was an encouraging time. And of course, we understand that it can be a discouraging time when someone passes on. Even though they go to heaven, there's still a void. And we understand that. We're thankful for heaven and we rejoice about that. But still, it can be a time of discouragement. As you go down through here, verse 4, a time to weep would be a time of discouragement. A, a time to laugh would be a time of encouragement. A time to break down, uh, I'm sorry, a time to mourn in verse number four would be a discouragement. A time to dance, a time to get encouragement, a time to lose would be discouragement, a time to keep. And so as you go down through here, you see that there are uh, oftentimes, many times, where we could find ourselves in a place of discouragement. And honestly, it's a season. We must understand that it will come. We could go across the room here and we could talk about past or present times where we just were just a little bit discouraged, spent a little time in discouragement. 
Honestly, if you think about where David's at in this situation in 1 Samuel chapter number 30, he probably was already living in discouragement before verse 1 even took place. Again, he's at the place where he is not the king. He's anointed to be king, but he's not the king. And he's also being chased by the king, King Saul. And in the back of your mind, just looking uh, to your right and to your left, even though he had 600 men with him and, and encouraged them and, and they were in a despondent place and they were distressed and they were discouraged and so forth and he brought them together, 600 men uh, in, in uh, kind of going around as he was being chased by the children of Israel, the army there, and... Saul, and this would come to an end here pretty quickly because the next chapter we see that Saul does pass away. But this might be at the place where uh, even uh, in the fact that he was discouraged about the place that he was not the king and, and all these things were maybe going on in his mind, he comes to a place and in verse number 1 where uh, the enemy Amalekites, they come in and they take Ziklag. And the Bible says that he was greatly distressed in verse number 6. And no doubt there was discouragement that was given. The word discouragement means to be disheartened, uh, dispirited, to be broken in spirit. And may I say this, as we look at verse number 4, we understand that these men, they lost their wives, they lost their families, they didn't know where they were, and everything was leveled there in the city, and they were discouraged. They were disheartened to depress the spirits, to be dejected, to deprive of confidence. And this is where they were at. Certainly it wasn't about uh, just the people that were with David, but David himself in verse number 5, had his family was gone himself. His wives were gone. His uh, children, uh, if you would, uh, were gone David was distressed because not only did we see that he was running from Saul, not only were the people and the men and himself uh, dealing with a just, just gut-wrenching, uh, heart-ripping, uh, just uh, a horrible emotional time because they were out in battle and they come back and everything and everyone is gone. But not only that, we see in verse number 6 that the, the people, those that were in fellowship. To David, those are the ones that, were, that, that David had made. You understand what I mean by that? David had made them to be uh, warriors. David had brought them along. He had brought them from the, the, the pit that they were in and the discouragement and the disheartening place and, and uh, uh, troubled places that they were all in. He brought them to a place of worth. He brought them to a place of, uh, of, 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 of just doing something and being involved in something and being, uh, you know, following David and in regards to battle. And now these guys who owed pretty much everything to David are now turning on David. And they want, they spake of stoning him. They, they spake, spake of getting rid of the leader. Because their soul, the Bible says, the soul of the people was grieved. This is a place of discouragement. Everything around them seems to be negative. Everything. It doesn't matter where they look. They look at their homes, they're gone. They're looking for their loved ones, their sons and their daughters. The Bible says in verse number 6, that's the reason why they were wanting to uh, be uh, in a place of stoning David, and they're gone. Their wives are gone. Everything that they had had up until that point was gone, and they were discouraged. The Bible says in verse number 6, again, 1 Samuel in verse number 30, verse number 6, and David was greatly distressed. This is the season that they were in. And just when you think that you get out of that season, you know how, uh, uh, for some of you here, you've never been back to the place where they have four seasons, all right? We have hot and we have nice, all right? That's kind of the two seasons that we have here. And I like it. I don't mind it at all. I don't mind as long as there's not snow, as long as they're not, uh, you know, frost and, and freezing cold. I'm okay with having hot, hotter, and hottest, okay? But, uh, 
But when you go back to uh, different uh, places of our country and different places of the world, you'll find that there is a shift in seasons. Uh, you'll go to other parts of the world. And, and uh, when I was in Nicaragua with uh, Brother uh, Marty Stoneacre, where I was there during a rainy season, where literally, literally every day at a certain point in time, you could be the meteorologist in that area because it was going to rain. It didn't matter. It might have been five seconds. It might have been five minutes. It might have been 50 minutes. But you were going to get a downpour at some point in time during that raising se rainy season. How many of you have been to parts of the country where the rainy season is like that? And it's like that. In different parts of the world, you go to that place and there is a rainy season. I mean, you can just set your clock on it during that time and then... You have a nice season or whatever it might be. But, but uh, you, you, you know there's a difference when you go, like, for instance, we grew up in Pennsylvania, and, and knowing that, hey, when autumn is coming, when fall is coming, guess what's happening? The leaves are changing, all right, right? And you, you get that, uh, you get that uh, picturesque, uh, you know, picture-perfect kind of uh, calendar type uh, picture that you have there with the, the driving down the country roads and everything is red and orange and different things. It's not green anymore. And then you go into winter. And winter, you know, snow is nice for the first time. Right? But like the, yeah, you're right. Who said no? Whoever said, yeah, you're right. That's, 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 that's preaching right there, all right? But, uh, you know, the, the, it looks nice as it falls down. But the problem is when it falls down, you have to shovel it out. You know, by, by February, March, you're just done with it. But the, but the trees, all the trees that look so beautiful in, in uh, the fall time just look ugly. There's nothing there, right? How many of you know what I'm talking about? No, no leaves, just bare. Then spring comes, and you, you know, get that last snow. And then it starts turning around, starting to be green again, and then you got the leaves that are coming up. There's definite seasons. You understand? You can watch it. Say, you know what? Spring is coming. And by the way, that's how God set it up, that there always is going to be a change of seasons. And like I say this, in the Christian life, there's always going to be seasons as well. The, pro the difference is, is that we don't know when they kind of come about. Because we're trusting in the Lord to meet all our needs all the time. Whether everything is great or when everything is not great, whether things are going wonderful or things are not going wonderful, when we're trusting in the Lord, we're just doing well. well. You know, sometimes even in our seasons, if we go into a season, sometimes we have to go deeper into that season. And that's where David is here in 1 Samuel chapter number 30. He's in a season, he's been in a season for a while, and it's about ready to break. Next chapter, we'll see that. You'll see that if you want to read ahead. But just before you think about ready to break, it dips down a little bit. You're like, Lord, boy, I thought we were just getting out of this season. And it's coming down again. Look at verse number 6 again. And David was greatly distressed. That word distressed means to bind. Almost like a pressure. To be in distress, to be cramped, be narrow. That's, that's what that word distress means. He was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. Listen, as a true leader, a true leader not just loves his own family, but his true leader, true leader loves the whole group. And when, listen, when one person hurts, everybody, he hurts for them as well. When somebody's going through a rough time, he's with them and he's, he's wanting to help them. And now not only is he hurting himself, but the people are hurting and they want to speak of stoning. How in the world are we going to get past this? And that's what we see the answer in verse number 6, the last part. But David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. David encouraged himself. The word encourage means to give courage to, to give or increase confidence of success. How is it that in this place, 
of deep despair and distress. How is it that can anyone can find any encouragement? David did. David found encouragement in the Lord his God. Encourage means to inspire with courage, to spirit or strength of mind, to embolden. Ladies and gentlemen, if we're in Ziklag tonight, if you're in Ziklag, may I say this, you don't have to stay there. You don't have to stay in that season. You don't have to wallow in that season of discouragement. You can encourage yourself in the Lord your God. David encouraged himself. How did he do that? I don't know. Maybe he went back and thought about the battle with Goliath and know that God had done a wonderful work. He was just an obedient to his father about taking uh, some bread and some cheese and some crackers to uh, his older brethren. And he's just going to see how the, the uh, battle was going on. And then when he came, no one was really doing anything. And, and he couldn't believe uh, what was spewing out of the Goliath's mouth. And he said, man, we've got, something's got to be done with this. And the Lord used him in a great and mighty way to kill Goliath. Even prior to that, as he is out tending to his father's sheep and just minding his own business, there's a, there's a, Samuel comes to visit with Jesse and to visit with his boys. And there he's going to, he is led of the Lord, Samuel is, to anoint the next king of Israel. We see here that David wasn't even invited to that time. He's just the little one. He's just the youngest. He's just the one that's out tending the sheep. He certainly isn't going to be chosen to be the king. I mean, we got Eliab. We got these other guys that are just, you know, manly men, if you would. But the Bible says that these were all, these boys were all passed by. And Samuel said to Jesse, is there not another Son? Oh, yeah, David. David comes and he's anointed king. I don't know about you, but when I find myself to be in a place of discouragement, it would be really good if we could just take our mind back to the times where God has done wonderful things in our life. Think about the times where God has done something in our life where we know we can't take the credit for it. We know that that's something that whatever happened or whatever took place was not anything else than the hand of Almighty God leading us and guiding us. And may I say this, if you can dwell on these things, it'll be encouragement. Amen. If anything, think about the fact when you got saved. When you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Boy, what an encouraging day. You might not have felt that then. You might have just, you know, you might have felt good and, and so forth. But looking back to say, hey, I accepted Christ as my Savior. Maybe that's the first time you led someone to the Lord. Or the first time you were in church and you received something from uh, a message and you applied it to your life. And boy, maybe the first time you tithed. And gave that 10% and how you just kind of just went like this with the check and put it in the offering plate. The usher was thinking, what in the world is his problem? And, uh, oh, I had to let it go. But boy, hey, the blessing. I remember the first time that, uh, that the Lord helped me in regards to missions in my life as church. I, I had taken, we had taken, the Lord had called us to, to pastor and, and uh, we left Mesa and moved to Maryland and, and uh, boy, I was going to set the world on fire. I'll tell you that. That was my thought. And, and, um, and uh, the Lord had other things uh, for me and learned and helped me along the way to teach me some things. But, but one of the things I thought was, you know what? Uh, and I, I, I publicly said this before, and I publicly am shamed by the fact that I thought this. But I thought, you know what? Going into this small church that, uh, you know, we're going to build this thing up. And when I get to be full-time and just, you know, the church is able to take care of me, then we're going to start thinking about missionaries. Boy, that was bad. I even say it, and I just can't even, oh. 
But the Lord helped me to understand that, you know what? We need to take care of missionaries now. We had our first missions conference, and we had two missionaries come in. One was a church planner. One was a, a missionary to the Philippines. And we had this mission conference, and we had faith promise missions, and people, people gave. And, and, uh, and boy, I was just nervous to all get out. How is this going to affect the bottom line? How is this going to affect the, I mean, I, I mean, certainly we're, we're giving this amount and so forth, and now that we're going to add another offering that's going to be separate, it's going to go uh, to the missionaries. Man, how is this going to work? I mean, we're going to go backwards. <laughs> uh, we went up like 30-some percent the next year in general giving, not in missions. They gave to missions, and their general decided to just go up. Hey, you know what we did? So we did something crazy. We had a spring missions conference. You know what we did? We had a fall missions conference. We had two more missionaries. And isn't that crazy? Having two missions conferences in a year, that's just an honor. We don't, uh, but uh, we did it for the first couple of years. We had two more missionaries coming in the fall. We had another faith promise for six months. And I'll tell you what, it's just amazing how the general just kept going up. As missions went up, and certainly we understand that God was proving our faith. And that is an opportunity when we look back to say, hey, when we give to God, He multiplies. How does He do it? That's not my business. It's my business to be obedient. And so we see here that, again, I don't know what it is for you in your life to, to bring an encouragement, but I know there are several stories in, in my uh, life and in our families that, that can be an encouragement. And, and you know what? We don't have to stay in zit lag. Not only do we see David encourage himself, but David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. You might have thought about these things that have been written or Already was written, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Verses like these that would bring encouragement to the Lord our God. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and, and truth unto such as keep His covenant and His testimonies. He is a rock, His work is pure, perfect. For all His ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is He. As for God, His way is perfect. The Lord, the word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in Him. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them. From this generation forever. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to them that put their trust in him. Show thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou that savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. And I promise you this, if you grab a hold of the word of God, you'll be encouraged. Encouraging yourself and, and thinking about the things that God has done in your life and the things that God has uh, brought in the, and, 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 and then two, uh, encouraging yourself in the Lord. Number three, tonight, remember where blessings come from. Encouraging yourself in the Lord, your God. You see, we only are able to live in one moment of time at a time. Does that make sense? Like, we live today. We have a past so we can kind of think about what has taken place in the past. But we have really, honestly and truthfully, even those that have tried to control your life and try to, you know, you don't really know what tomorrow holds. Right? We understand that? We don't, we don't, you might have scheduled out things that are going to do and, and uh, things that are going to happen and, and these things, but we really don't have control over things that could 
take place in the future. But you also need to understand that God lives in all the moments of time at the same time. He knows everything. He sees everything moving forward. He lives in it. Number three, we need to remember where blessings came from. Encourage yourself in the Lord your God. Because the story doesn't end in verse number six of 1 Samuel 30. It, it, it's not over. It doesn't just stop there. It doesn't just stay right in that moment. And so, ladies and gentlemen, if you're living in discouragement, uh, you need, with God's help, to get you out of that place because you don't need to stay there. You don't need to stay in that ziklag. You don't need to stay in, and be thinking about the, the fact that people are going to stone you and everything is uh, going against you and, and everything that you have is gone and all these different things. What does David do? Verse number 7, And David said unto Abathar the priest, Amalek's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abathar bring, brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover what? All. Isn't it nice to get an answer from the Lord? Isn't it great? Even when you're in a place of uh, uh, a zit lag, a little bit of discourage, you shift gears, if you would, and you get onto your prayer closet, and you grab that ephod, if you would, and you pray, and you get an answer from the Lord, and the answer of the Lord says, I want you to do this, and I want you to do this, and everything's going to be okay. Romans 8, 28 helps us in these things. And for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to your purpose, uh, to his purpose. You know, when you think about God, your discouragement will flee. When you and I think about God, listen, you might, you might not be able to control the situation and people are raining down on you left and right. Listen, these men were wanting to stone David. What did David do? He encouraged himself, and the Lord is God. Listen, he was encouraged, and then he gets the, the ephod, and then he starts praying, and then he gets an answer from the Lord. Hey, quickly, listen, the Lord doesn't want you to stay in the ziklag uh, time of your life. Yes, it's going to come. There's a time to be born, and there's a time to die, and there's a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to love, and a time to hate, and all these different times. And yes, there's a season for mountaintops, and yes, there's a season for valleys, but you don't have to stay in that season of the valley forever. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You can encourage yourself and Lord your God, and here's the answer. So David went. Verse 9, he and the 600 men that were with him and came to the brook Besor where those that were left behind stayed. And he pursued, finds an Egyptian, gets him food and takes care of him and finds out where the Amalekites are. Verse number 16, and when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. And David smote them from the twilight even uh, unto the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man of them, save 400 young men, which rode upon the camels and fled. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives, notice, and there were there, there was la nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil, nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. We shouldn't be shocked by that last three words. Why should we not be shocked about last, those last three words? Because God already said that he was going to recover all. And listen, when God says it, it, listen, in due season, it'll take place. Folks, this is why I believe with all my heart, if we continue to be faithful to the Lord in the little things, we continue to be faithful to the Lord in the missions, if we continue to be faithful in the Lord and the man of God, if we continue to, to try to do as much as we can as our church can in regards to be, 
helping with the needs of others, I believe with all my heart. And listen, I will die believing this, and uh, you can't convince me otherwise, but God will take care of us if we take care of the needs of others. Amen. Amen. You say, why are we giving $2,000 a month to missions? We could use that for rent. If you want to do that, kick me out and get somebody else in, because I'm not going to do that. Listen, our rent's going up 3%, all right? Praise the Lord. And that's okay. At least it's not 10%. But listen, why are we, why are we, we don't want to get into a place of, oh no, how, how, we, listen, and it, it can be, uh, we can, uh, there might be a season for that, but may I just say this, listen, we're going to be faithful with what God has done, and we're going to be faithful in the little things that God has, and God will take care of it. Remember where the blessings come from. Listen, God uses people. We understand that. But listen, all the glory belongs to Him. All the glory belongs to Him. Verse number 20. Notice if it would here. And David took all the flocks and the herds which they drave before uh, those other cattle and said, this is David's spoil. How did he get spoiled? Because the Amalekites didn't just take the things from Zitlag. They were warring in other places too and they took some stuff and so not only did David receive everything back in whole nothing was lost but he gained how is it that he could gain because when you trust in the Lord with all your heart you're leaning not on your own understanding in all thy ways you're acknowledging him and he shall direct thy path Oh, listen, there's been times where you and I have been in a zit lag season. You understand what I mean? Off in the distance, you see some smoke. And, hmm, I'm traveling that way. That doesn't look good. Get closer and closer and closer, and your fears become realities, and you realize, yikes, the city's leveled. You walk into the city, there's nothing. You left it with family, you left it with loved ones, you left it with all these things, and now there's nothing. And you break down. And you're in a discouraging time, a distressing time. Not only is Saul coming after you with the Israelites, but now uh, the enemy has come in and has uh, just ransacked the whole area. Listen, this is when you need to understand God's been good to me. Remember when God took care of me over there? Remember when God took care of me over there? There's a reason why we sing the song, count your blessings, name them one by one. Can you name your blessings? I'll tell you what, you can name all the gossip that has come back to you negatively. You can remember that. That person said something bad to me 30 years ago and I never forgave them. You remember that. How about all those blessings? How about the time that, that God takes care of you? And we bought this Pontiac Montana that we probably shouldn't have bought. But we needed a van. We were, Harmony had just been born, and we were in Maryland, and we saw this great deal. It was thousands less than anywhere else. We buy it in this mom-and-pop shop on the east side of Baltimore. Red flags right there. Actually, it was the south side of Baltimore. Extreme red flags right there. And uh, we bought it and come to find out it already had a lien on it. And the guy, mom and pop shop, sold it to us, pocketed the money, then two weeks later closed up. We get this letter from the state of Maryland saying, you have a lien on this property. We can't give you a license plate. Had to settle with the past. I don't want to pay a couple more thousand dollars just to get it. And then just right after that, the transmission goes out. <laughs> Amen. And listen, we were just trusting the Lord with what we, what we knew to do. I mean, we were just, you know. Isn't it great when God gives mercy when you really need it? 
And I go to the mailbox, can still picture it. Walk up a little hill, walk across the street, this big old green thing, open it up, there's an envelope there sent to me with no return address. And don't do this, by the way, because I worked for a short time in the mail. You don't want to do this. But there were 17 $100 bills in the package, cash, that we were able to not have to use the visa, but pay for the new transmission. I'm not saying don't give somebody money, just don't use the mail to do it. That's what I'm saying. But the honest, simple truth is, is listen, that's, and you can go time after time and time again. When Justice was born, he was in NICU for a week, and we were like, what in the world? You know, these different things that, that can be zigzags in our life. But Lord, the Lord will use those times to bring in encouragement to know, hey, I'm still here. The Bible says, for he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. But it feels like when we're in zigzag in that time, that season, it feels like he's not even anywhere close. But that's our bad thinking. He is. He's right there. We just got to call on him. As soon as David encourages himself in the Lord as God, he gets on his knees and he prays and he gets a clear answer from God. Just like that. The long, drawn-out process of it's zigzag. What's going to happen? Is it, boy, is that us? Is that us? And then, boom, all of that. And then encouraging herself, answer to prayer, moves forward, gets everything back, and some. That's the whole story. And listen, let's just wait and see what the, how the Lord plays this thing out. Let's not stay in a place of zitlag. Let's not, let's not uh, stay in zitlag. Let's be encouraged in the Lord. This isn't self-motivation. This is God motivating us to remind us that He's with us every step of the way. He is. Father, I pray that you'd help us tonight. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I pray that you would help us to stay encouraged. Lord, we all can be in a season of discouragement. There's so many things. The devil likes to mess with us in our mind, in our thinking, because well, we have the flesh that we deal with every day. But Lord, if we can just sit and remember all the things that you've done for us, how good you've been to us. Father, we don't have to stay in that place of zit lag. We can be encouraged. We can be encouraged in what you've done for us. We can go to the Psalms, go to Proverbs, be encouraged by your word. We don't have to stay in that defeated place of zit lag. And Lord, when we are encouraged by you as we move forward in what you've given us, Lord, and Lord, faithful to you as David was, he received everything back and more. And Lord, if you choose to do that for us, that would be great. But Lord, we're just going to trust in you that you can and that you will. Or there might be someone here tonight that is thinking about being discouraged or is in discouragement even now. Father, would you help all of us to be encouraged in the Lord your God and the Lord our God, please. May we remember the things that you've done in our life that we know it's been you. How you've led us how you've guided us. Lord, even at the time, we didn't even know how it was going to work out. We didn't even know how everything was going to turn out. But you knew. I pray that you'd help us in these areas. Father, help us to not live in uh, the place of zitlag. Yes, there might be seasons and times when we go into it, but may we, with your help, be encouraged and move forward for your honor and glory. I pray that you bless this invitation now and help us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.